Hello, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, hope you can hear me okay. Yes, hello. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, you went away. All right. Uh, okay. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, Mark, the goats were out behind my house, so I finally got some pictures for every one of me and my goats. <laughs> Joseph, how you doing? Um, sound and picture okay right now? Hey, Randy. Okay, good, great. All right, good. Um, well, let me tell you what I'd like to uh, talk about. Uh, Hi, Stefan. <laughs> uh, uh, what I'm going to try to do is uh, not screw up. <laughs> this morning, uh, everything went sideways. I was trying to find this um, this tool, and I, I had picked it up earlier, and I was looking all over for my tool, and it had been in my hand the whole time. So um, who knows what's going to happen? Um, so let me tell you what I'd like to do uh, today. Uh, First of all, oh, hey, Sam, found a great deal on high-grade E. Howard & Company pocket watch. Great. Uh, and I'm considering buying it. I don't know if I'll ever wear it. Uh, what are your thoughts? I don't know that much about pocket watches and uh, nor that brand. Uh, if if it has a, a Unita 6497 or 98, that would be a nice one to have. Aloha, Donald. Are you are you from Hawaii? I take it. Yes, no. Um. Anyway, the um, time warp this night. Oh, really? Oh, uh, Stefan, is that where you guys have a, a your your uh, going to your what they call the uh, summertime? Oh, okay. How are things in Hawaii, uh, quarantine wise? A friend of mine in uh, uh, Saigon, in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, was uh, was telling me he he had a video, uh, and it sh he was in this store in uh, Vietnam, in uh, I think it was in uh, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and everybody had their mask on and they were shopping away, but they were all crowded around together, and I thought, my God, I said, <laughs> I said I haven't seen a crowd like that in a while. And uh, I guess it was from two days ago, and I, I don't know how long ago the uh, the video was, but the it was put up there a couple of days ago. And he said, uh, he said not anymore. He said only one family member at a time can go into a store. So, so yeah, things are shut down here too. We're uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, so this is uh, so this is us. Okay. Well, let me start off today with what I was trying to do this morning. Hey, Joseph, today I purchased an Alexander Sarkohoff, uh 63 watch, uh, artisanal watchmaking without the artisanal watchmaking high prices. Let's take a look at them. Okay. All right. Hundred, uh, $1,100, 1100 watches per year. Wow. Okay. Um, Yep, uh, Europe, European DST. What is the European DST? Oh, daylight savings time. Yeah. Okay. We we've been on uh, Eastern saving Eastern daylight saving time for a while now. Uh, let me start off with the with a picture of what was done this morning, and this is using a sort of like a fulcrum uh tool you just you take it and you put it underneath the um put it underneath the hand and you just go like that and up it pops now this plastic around it is to protect the gilo shea and and uh, the dial in general from uh getting uh, messed up with this tool but I found out these these pictures work a lot better than trying to do it live because when I do something something bad happens uh, like today. Um, 
I, I have it set up again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show it to you what it looks like right now. And let's see, this is really hard to, huh. Uh, the plastic uh, cuts down on the glare a lot. But uh, what I did, I put the hour hand back on just to show how, how it can be removed. And um, so that, with that said, I'm gonna, I think I ought, ought to be able to do it, whoops, without uh, too much drama, I hope. And, ah, there it came right off. What a good hand you are. Okay, and then you want to put it away somewhere. I, I have the uh, other hands in here, so they're just all put away. So now, all that's left to do is to take the dial off. Now, uh, the dial has a couple screws in the back uh, that hold it on, uh, depending on the um, uh, depending on the uh, uh, depending on the movement that you have, they're a little different. Now, uh, for this one, I need a little bigger screwdriver, so I'm going to use the uh, purple screw. And instead of using the one for my glasses, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take one of these um, loops here and put it right in like that. And... Mm. The um, the dial pins or the the dial screws are they don't unscrew. They have like a little um, camber, and they either block it or not. And I was hoping that I could. Uh, what I probably should have done is loosened it up. Uh, but I'll. Um, I'll see if I can get it. Well, I'll, I'll I'll do it later because every time I try a live demonstration, just like now, it never works out right. And so I'm going to put this up before I wreck it, and um, I'll have pictures and everything for you tomorrow, all right? Because no matter how much I prepare, what I do, it always gets goofy. Okay, doc. So let's talk about uh, watches. Um, I put on uh, on the uh, high high horology uh, lounge. I put up a couple of uh, uh, Parmigianis that were uh, for sale new by an AD. Now that's sort of a little unusual when you get your AD uh, selling them at uh, some really good discounts. Anyway, um, they were a couple neat watches too. Uh, very tempting for myself, I might add. Uh, I don't have. Well, the only chronograph I have is my mono Rotropont, and that's a chronograph. But these chronographs, they're called a metrograph, and they have um, they have the window on the back, and I mean they're they're really nice watches. And I think they list they have a pretty reasonable list price. I mean, for a Parmigiani, they're about I think about nineteen, no, no, not nineteen, about eleven, eleven, twelve thousand, right in there, and uh, the AD. Uh, was offering him at uh, about 5,000 something. Uh, and that includes all of the papers and the guarantees. So anyway, so I put them up there if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Um, let's see. 
Okay. Exclusivity is the key here. They are highly regarded among German horological sources. In fact, their watches are made in Germany. Okay, now these uh, ones you're talking about are the Alexander Schokohoff, right? It, uh, 63. Man. Okay. Um, I have to take a look at that. Okay, you only got one in Austria. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Uh I should add that all the proceeds uh, from my watch purchases will go to assist those in need of food during this difficult period. Uh, shout out to the luxury world. Oh, that's really great, Joe. Um, the proceeds from your from your watch purchase. Um, when you buy a watch, the proceeds are going to go to uh, to food during um, during this time. Uh, is that is the luxury well going to do that? By the way, too, the luxury well is located in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, and I, I think uh, it's that would be a great thing if they did that. Uh, for about twenty years, uh, I worked with uh, the food share uh, that's here in uh, Bloomfield and Hartford, and uh, the longer I worked with it, the more I found out about how they were essential uh, for food for people. Uh, and most of the people who who needed the food were fully employed, uh, but their between what their income was just wasn't uh, quite enough to make ends meet, and so they'd use the uh, um, uh, food share. So it's a good thing, and that's a that's one of the few places where I, I donate um, every year something. So. Eh, well, Enough of that. Uh, okay, so that's good to hear about that. And the food share is helping people now. So what else is going on uh, besides me screwing up watch demonstrations? <laughs> and I'll have the I'll have the front off tomorrow, and I'll have some pictures about uh, how to do that. Um, of another you know, stealer. Yeah, great reason to buy a watch. Yeah, that's great. It, it really is. Uh, Luxury Well, too, has some really, really good deals. And um, so it's something you might want to check out. I almost got my Moser there, but the one I wanted, they had uh, sold. I, I went there and made them an offer. And they said, uh, that watch that you just made the offer in will be sold by tomorrow at noon. I guess they had some kind of deal and a guy was going to go pick it up at uh, noon the day that... Uh, yeah, that, that happens. It was still a good deal. Are you making a subliminal message with FP Jorn cap instead of your uh, beanie? <laughs> Hardly subliminal. Uh, my subliminal message is in my uh, in my other coffee cup, not in this one. Uh, uh, I was uh, I was talking to um, a friend in uh, England uh, earlier. And uh, they're all locked up. They're, the prime minister's got the bug. Man, we're in great shape. You know, what a time to buy a watch. I'm, you know, isolated with watches. I was out in the back taking pictures of me and the sheep, or not the sheep, but the goats are uh, the uh, goats that they had. I got on my um, H. Uh, Moser um, uh, Henry Double Hairspring. Uh, this watch is the big boy. One of the things, let me tell you about one thing I I have with this watch. Uh, I got a really super nice um, extra watch band from uh, Mike Margolis, uh, uh, who is the American representative for um, H. Moser. And what I did with it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but see these things right here? They're called uh, band savers. And they're this uh, mole skin, uh, like a, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's it's a mole skin, like tape that you put on. And so uh, instead of, you know, jamming up your uh, strap, uh, it it goes into this, uh, into the what's called the band saver. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't put them on all of my watches, uh, and I probably should but only certain ones that I wear and that. 
Ah, uh, those fancy goats, eh, Par? You bet. I got fancy goats. None of the lumpen proletariat goats for me. Uh, Moser mechanisms are, yeah, they really are. You know that that's one thing about Mosers is that you you look at the you look at the movement, and they are just incredibly well built. I mean, incredibly fin well finished and everything else. There's not a lot of um, uh, engraving and things that the Germans uh, do and really do beautifully, like on my uh, Lang and Hein. Uh, but they have a, but they're really, really, really nice movement. Let me show you, see if I can, I don't know how well you can see it from this camera, especially, uh, let's see, there you go. Um, there's there's no engraving, but there are, there's a lot of little messages there. And the other thing that I really like is that on the back, let me see if I can show it to you, right here, right up here, that's the uh, power reserve indicator. And so you can have, you know, a nice smooth front, either with uh, center seconds or small seconds. This one's got the small seconds on it. And, you know, without having to uh, put in a power reserve indicator to, uh, I, I don't know how often people look at that or not, but uh, it's, it's sort of a handy thing to have. So, yeah, those are, I, I really like the mechanisms on that. All right, so anybody else, uh, anything else happened? Uh, anything else that's new with you guys? Um, Watch-wise, I've been seeing a lot of deals on um, uh, Touch of Modern, and that's sort of cool. But I don't know. I, I haven't seen any kind of thing going sort of panic crazy uh, yet. Uh, so what else? I prefer the HMC 321 over the more recent HMC 327. It has the gold uh, escape, escape wheel and is more complex and harder to make. <laughs> okay. Well, that'll teach you hard to make. I don't, I don't know which one this is. This is, this is uh, they have, they have two, the, of the two that I have, I'm not sure which one this is, but it's sort of a variation of the ones that are generally small seconds. This one has a shape movement though. It's a, it's a torno shape like this. And uh, then it has a double hairspring, which is uh, with something that is engineering wise, every, every other wise is, is, uh, is fairly complex. And that was, they're cool things. I think they only use them now uh, with their tourbillons. And that's because they, you know, you can charge a lot more for a tourbillon but someone you know, doesn't want to get hit up with the cost of a, a double hairspring. And so they figure, well, you know, there, we can sort of get offset the cost with the cost of the tourbillon. I'm not really sure. Okay, uh, I'm looking at a Saxonia Thin. Um, yeah, those are nice watches. Uh, uh, the Saxonia Thin, the, the ones that I looked at, were a little small for me and uh but they but the, they come in different sizes the the whole saxonia line there's there's another one they have i think it may be it's the 18 something or other uh a a longer they have that are nice too but saxonia uh the thin looking for a uh a, a formal party <laughs> Those are beautiful watches. What's your first see-through uh, back watch? Ah, good question, John. It wasn't my Patek Philippe. It wasn't my uh, old overseas. I had the overseas one. So which one was it? May have been my, um, the, um, uh, buh, 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 the 1921. I think it was. I'm not positive though. Uh, it's it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, uh, and when I started, I mean, both of my um, FP Jorns are have the uh, exhibition window in the back. Uh, my Mosers have them. My um, see only uh, 
let's see, one, two. I only have two Vesteron Constantines. One has it and one doesn't. The, uh, the 1972 doesn't. The Beauvais, uh, the one I have, the one I got from my wife, has an exhibition window. Most of my watches do have an exhibition window. Uh, 38 millimeters, my sweet spot on this. Uh, this is a 37. Yeah, Mark, I tell you, on a 37, I had uh, my... Um, my uh, overseas was a 37. Those early ones uh, were 37 millimeter. Work fine. Uh, my, I like between sort of a 38 to um, 41 or two, depending on the watch. Some watches uh, wear big, some, some wear smaller. Uh, the thing with this watch, this watch I wore today, uh, my my wife had it on her Dunhill, so I thought, well, we'll both have the same movement on, so <laughs> we we wore this one. Um, the you know, in order to find out whether a watch is too big or too small for you, you really have to try it on. The um, uh, the Beauvais in 1930, which has a great uh, back window to it, that one looks pretty big, and I think it's. 40 millimeter, I think. And then it's got that big bow and crown on the end of it. But it doesn't wear big. It just it just doesn't. And I don't know why. I it, you know, it's sometimes other watches that look like, oh, that's gonna be a little bitty watch. Uh my uh Henry um Harry uh, Winston, I think is 37 or 38, uh, but it doesn't look like it's a small watch. It's got those those uh, three pillars, those are from the uh, uh, the Harry Winston Boutique on Fifth Avenue, the old one. And um, it's sort of a, they have those on both ends. And so it, it doesn't even know you've got a 37-inch, uh, a 37-millimeter case. you got these, I, I call them buck teeth <laughs> on both ends of it. Uh, let's see, HMC is a nicer than the 327. Boy, I, I'll t I'll have to look at those. Um, I'll have to take a look at the uh, the my numbers again. The ones that I like, I the the new one is the HMC two hundred, and the HMC two hundred is the um is is the automatic, and I'm not crazy about automatics. Like I said, that's my idiosyncrasy. Uh, but this guy uh, here. And I don't know how big this one is because, you know, it's not a it's not a little bitty watch, and um, but it's 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 one that I don't know where is big or not. It's all I know is that uh, it's a super comfortable watch, and for a watch this size to be uh, really comfortable, uh, you need it to be uh, nicely done. Look at how the lug sort of wrap around there the way they do it they're not horn lugs um like on my um parmigiani i don't know what what they're called okay let's see uh pasca guilia arranged for cello okay uh oh sorry <laughs> that, that, wait a minute uh eddie you misspelled parmigiani <laughs> it's, it's, Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, uh, Eddie, uh, what what is the difference between the three twenty one to three twenty seven? I uh, again, I I have, I'm not sure what my numbers are. Uh, I think is three forty three. I think on my uh, on my um, endeavor, and I'm not sure what the base is here. But the base on this one, I think. Is the same that's on um, Clyde's uh, small second. Okay, let's see. Eterna has some very nice watches. You know, uh, Joe, that's something that uh, Eterna is something I'm. I've got to take a look at. That's that's an interesting brand. It really is, and uh, so I. That's something I'd really like to look into.
uh, they have financial difficulties. Uh, there might be some bargains. Yeah, I think there are. Yeah, I don't think there's a watch company um, other than maybe Rolex and Patek Philippe who haven't had some uh, difficulties in the last several years of some one sort or the other. Who's the guy? Um, you know, the guy who made the uh, Dr. Austin Witch or something like that. Uh, the guys, you know, he was like a really like a magnet to some of the best watchmakers. And they used to work with him. And uh, this last year, they all sort of split up and went, went away. I don't know what what was going on with that one either. Um, Osterwich, he, he's the one that's, that has that neat, uh, very unusual perpetual calendar. He made it with nine parts. <laughs> he, used, he used to give... Patek Philippe a hard time about it because Patek Philippe used, I don't know how many, so like 100, 200 uh, parts. My favorite um, perpetual calendar, though, is still the uh, H. Moser. Okay, what's going on? Let's see. Uh, all right. Okay, I have been looking at the Turner Caliber 3505 and 3510. Cool. Uh, what what are their, uh, their sort of key, the uh, Eterna's key models that are worth looking at? I, I, I'm not familiar with them. I mean, usually when I, when I look at a set of uh, collection, they'll have the sports watches and the dress watches and sort of like an office watch of some sort and then the chronographs and so on and so forth. I, I don't know Eterna's at all. Really haven't looked at it. Uh, the other, the other overlooked, and man, they've been having financial problems it seems forever. But a really cooler Vulcan. Uh, let's see. Check the Eterna uh, Madison collection. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Thanks. All right. Well, um, so much for taking the the. Uh, um, the dial off a off a watch. I'll I'll have to go and carefully do it so I don't break anything, and uh, then tomorrow we can do it. But that's the last thing. It's the only thing left to do, and we'll take a look at the parts. There are the the parts that make it up, and then we'll look at the the tools to put it back together. Um. Ah, okay. Most turners are divers. All right. I think it has a removable balance platform and gold escapement. It seems like the 327 is more of a budget movement, if I can say that of, of a Moser. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, um, uh, Eddie. You know, you're right. I mean, a, a budget uh, is sort of like a, a, a budget Maserati, you know, something like that, or, or a budget uh, Mercedes Benz. Uh, Okay. Um, all right. Okay, guys. Well, listen, it's uh, about time's up. So off I go. And uh, everyone stay safe. And until next time. Oh, we're having tomorrow, we're going to have a collection review. So hope, hope you like that. Take care. More on work tools. Okay.